Hey Tim, I just want to say it was great getting to meet you on the 4th of July weekend. I wish I could have done something about the weather, but it wasn't that bad after all. Um, Logan asked me what is he like in real life, and all I could say was watch his videos. What you see is what you get. Um, another thought occurred to me, and uh, I'll let you ponder this yourself. Since we were standing so close to each other taking video of the fireworks, I was wondering if we could, uh, you know, redshift one and blue shift the other and combine the two into an overlay so that if you had those weird glasses, you'd actually see it in stereo. Maybe your Vegas could uh, do something like that if you want the footage. I'd be happy to send it to you. As far as responding to this video, as far as your hair goes, all I can say is I can't believe you did that, and I'll leave it at that. Oh, I also want to thank you for picking up that dinner tab. You were very sneaky there, um, and partial recompense. As you'll recall, I was hanging out at Borders before we had dinner, and one of the books I picked up was this one, The Assault on Reason by Al Gore. And uh, it's such a jaw-dropper, I think, uh, you'll, you'll like to read it, so I'm going to send you another copy that I went and bought in partial recompense for dinner, which uh, I'm still trying to lose weight from, by the way. My only caution on this book is what I always say, never trust anybody who has an agenda, which doesn't mean that they're lying. It just means think about what they're saying and why they're saying it. So, in particular, he uh, really misrepresents, I'm not sure whether it's through ignorance or through a deliberate attempt to mislead, the Athenian democracy when he refers to it and the Roman Republic when he refers to it. I think he refers to each one like three or four times throughout the course of the book. And uh, he also has a tendency. Oh, air conditioner just came on. <sighs> and he also has a tendency to uh, gloss over some of the rather egregious things that happened in the past of this country. Um, a little bit of over-romanticism as far as uh, our founding fathers and their intent and all that, um, which is borne out by this book, which I'm almost finished reading. Um, <clears throat> this is about the period between the uh, Articles of Confederation and the adoption of the Constitution and everything that happened in between. And uh, another book I haven't started yet, but I, I think would be a good adjunct to this one is one that's been getting a lot of publicity is this one by Scott McClellan, who was his uh, press secretary for a long time. So this is the next one on my list. But anyway, this is the one I'm going to send you. And if it turns out you've already read this, um, I'd suggest you send it to Vital Finds. Now I'm going to skip most of your video in terms of response and move on to the end. I have not made up my mind who I'm going to vote for, Barack or McCain, or maybe even a third party. What the heck, it's been a long time since I did that. I was definitely going to go for Perot in 92 if he hadn't done that stupid thing of showing what an idiot he was. Uh, in fact, I think if he hadn't done that he would have won. But. Uh, Anyway, that's water under the bridge. I made a video a while back on Barack, Hillary, and McCain, and I'll put a link to that up. Um, not a lot of what I've said there has changed, in my opinion. I don't know, I'll try to outline a little bit of my thinking as quickly as I can. I hope I can get this in 10 minutes still. Um, 
McCain, I think, has much better qualifications to be president. I'm much more trusting of him having the executive power than someone who basically has no experience at it and has not really been forthcoming like Barack Obama. And I don't think Barack Obama has any chance, really, of having a successful presidency. Um, you can talk about health care reform all he wants, but it's not going to happen. At least John McCain is fairly upfront about the fact that it's not going to happen. The reason for that being that the insurance lobby is the most influential lobby in Washington. There's just no... question about that. There's nobody even comes close. Um, and I just don't think he has the experience of uh, working with the people he would need to work with in and out of government to get anything significant done. Now, I believe that he has the potential in a second term, once he gets some experience, to be a reasonably good president. Where is that second term going to come from if he's a disaster in his first term? McCain, on the other hand, I just found a really good reason to be afraid of. Um, I was, found this in a People magazine and he was uh, asked 25 questions. One of them is, what's the first thing you change in the White House? His answer is, spending. Stop the out-of-control, wasteful, pork-barrel spending. Now, wait a minute and stop and think about that. The question is, what's the first thing you would change in the White House? And then he talks about spending. Stop the out-of-control, wasteful, pork-barrel spending. Well, excuse me, that's not the White House, that's the Congress. Now, where the heck has Senator McCain been for the past several years? Decades. <laughs> um... Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a reason to worry about the guy. But what it comes down to for me is this. On the bench of the Supreme Court, we now have pretty much a 5-4 split in favor of the Republican conservative faction. In particular, Scalia, Thomas, Alito, and Roberts all came from the same institutional incubator. John McCain has said that if he has the chance to make an appointment, he's going to stick to that pattern. I don't think we want to go there. Now we've got three liberal judges that are in their 70s. So the question is this. Can they sit through four years of McCain, or are we going to lose one, two, or three of them? That's a roll of the dice. We just don't know. So, here's how it plays out for me. If McCain wins, in 2012, we get a Democrat. Maybe a decent Democrat, one that can do something and we'll get somewhere. Barack wins in 2012, chances are we'll get a Republican. So what it all comes down to for me is that Supreme Court question. How likely is it that the liberals on the Supreme Court that are nearing retirement will step down just to give Barack a chance to make those appointments I don't know the answer to that. And how likely is it that in the end a Republican will end up making those appointments based on who wins this next, this next election? So that's what has to be thought about. So the way I'm almost ready to lean right now is to vote for McCain just so we can get 
the Democrats in for an eight-year term in 2012. I think that's the strategy. Let me know what you think.